Hello everyone, hi. Today we are going to speak about time lapse technology in IVF laboratory. With me today is Dr. Sapna Srinivas, IVF lab director, chief embryologist, Mamta Fertility Hospital, Hyderabad. Hello Dr. Sapna, how are you doing? Hello Ma, I'm doing good, thank you. Hi. So uh, Dr. Sapna, can you please explain us what the embryo incubator is? So at least 10 to 15 percent of couples who are trying naturally uh, fail to conceive even after trying for one to two years. And when they come to us, we investigate and find out what the cause is. And around, uh, you know, at least 30 or 40 percent of them, there is a problem in severe sperm count uh, issues, uh, male factor or a tubal factor or an ovulatory disturbance or uh, you know a condition like endometriosis where there is extensive disease in the pelvis. So in such patient, patients we uh, undertake a procedure called IVF uh, otherwise known as the test tube baby procedure. So what is happening in IVF is that in a normal uh, menstrual cycle the egg that is growing in the follicle in the ovary of the woman ovulates into the tube and the tube goes and picks it up right and that is where fertilization is happening and the embryo is growing over a period of four days and arrives into the uterine cavity and then implants into the endometrium of the uterine lining. So this entire process is recreated in the laboratory which we call as IVF. Okay. So, uh, the, where is this embryo growing? It is growing in an incubator. So, I'll take you into the laboratory and actually mm -hmm. show you an embryo incubator. Sure, Dr. And Sapna. we can also see how time lapse is advantageous over the regular incubators. Sure. Let's move to the laboratory then. Yes. So, this is, as you can see, a big box incubator that we use in IVF. And in this incubator, we have chambers. And here inside is a very controlled environment, an environment where the temperature is kept at 37 degrees centigrade. The CO2 is kept at such a level where the pH is maintained at 7.2 in that culture medium in which the embryo is growing. And the oxygen saturation is kept at 5%. So this controlled environment makes sure that the embryo grows, uh, you know, uh, continuously like in nature. And what we are doing is mimicking what's happening in the tube of the woman in the laboratory. As you can see, every time I open this big incubator to take out the embryo, I am growing them in this small micro droplets um, of medium in a dish like this, which is non-toxic. And as the embryo is growing here, I have to take snapshots of how the process is happening under the microscope and maybe I will be looking at the embryos for a period of three to five, you know, three to five times over that period of five to six days. So as you can see, when I open this incubator to take off, take, to take out dishes or keep back dishes, the entire culture conditions are constantly changing. And this is puts a lot of stress on the growing embryo. So what the embryo does is it uses its important resources to maintain homeostasis with the environment instead of using them to grow. So in some way, this kind of culture environment is suboptimal for uh, growing healthy, viable embryos to the perfect sense. So Dr. Sapna, are there different kinds of incubators? Yes. Around about in you know the late 2000s, there was a purpose-built incubator that was made for the specific purpose of IVF. So we saw that there were so many flaws in the big box incubator. The culture conditions were unstable. And therefore, this is a benchtop incubator. Like you can see, there is a small chamber and this dish, which is the same culture dish that I showed you, is now individually placed here in a smaller chamber. So, it is very easy for the culture conditions to recover faster. If that incubator takes about 30 minutes, this small benchtop chamber, when I open and close, take out the dish and put it back, takes about two minutes to recover. So this was far more superior for uh, IVF culture system. Dr. Sapna, please explain us what is the time lapse system? So like we saw the benchtop incubator, it is like a benchtop incubator. But this time lapse system is far more advanced. It has a camera, a microscope, 
which is constantly taking images of the embryo as it is developing inside that chamber that we showed you. If you can you know, see here, there are multiple embryos that are growing inside this benchtop incubator. There is a microscope and a camera which is constantly taking images at different focal planes and all this is generating huge data, huge images, number of images which are converted into a video format and so easy at a click of a button, I can actually look at all the entire growth process of these embryos over a period of five to six days and look at the minute details continuously without disturbing the, them from the culture environment. So basically it's an embryo along with a microscope integrated into the system. Here is a time lapse video of a single embryo that has been growing in culture for a period of five days. Watch how we can see the 2PN indicating that fertilization has occurred and subsequently the embryo is dividing into two cells T2, three cells T3, four cells T4 and so on till it reaches the blastocyst stage. Our time-lapse studies have revealed so many secrets about embryo development and viability. The key to successful IVF is embryo selection. During their growth, embryos have demonstrated to us their morphology, cell stages, division speeds and other abnormal cleavage patterns. Using all this information, we can ensure that we would be selecting the best and most viable embryos for freezing or transfer, leading to the birth of a healthy baby. With time lapse, we now have so much more information that we could not observe in routine IVF culture. Excellent quality embryos are always associated with much higher chances of pregnancy and live birth. Is there any advantage of using time lapse system in an IVF cycle? So the first thing we have already seen how the culture conditions are stable because we are not going to touch the dish out of this incubator because it's constantly being imaged inside. And when we do not disturb the culture environment, obviously we're going to get better embryo development. So the first thing is we're having embryos which are better quality. Number two is because we have this continuous monitoring that I showed you, uh, as a team, all of us sit down and actually look at so many details that the embryo is going through during this journey and we can select the most viable embryo for transfer to improve outcomes for our patients. Dr. Sapna, are the time-lapse videos available to the couple who undergo IVF treatment? So we at Mamta Fertility Hospital have always strived to offer the best technological advances to our couples who come for IVF treatment. And uh, what we actually do is, you know, um, get the entire video of the, their embryos that are growing in our laboratory and put it on a pen drive and give it to our patients. So the entire process is extremely transparent and couples are actually watching their embryos grow with us together. What is deselection of embryos? Can time lapse help in preventing abortion? So in patients who have had repeated IUI failures or couples who have experienced repeated IVF failures, severe male factor infertility, low ovarian reserve, older women or those women who have had repeated miscarriages, time lapse actually gives us a lot more information as to why all this has happened. When we look at the embryo growth process, in a time-lapse incubator and when, when we actually assess these videos individually each and every embryo how it is dividing what is the time it is taking for a particular cleavage stage so much of information is actually uh, available to us to assess why all this has happened in the past so thank you so much Dr. Sapna for enlightening us about the advantages of time-lapse in IVF. Totally my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.